Hey sausages, welcome to Circle of Tone and welcome to a bonus episode of Fat Strings Friday. And this is a review on the Glary J style five string bass. Go, let's have a quick listen to it and then we'll do my overall opinion on it later on. Uh, but let's have a listen first of all. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love this guitar. I just want to get the cons out of the way. There's one thing about the bridge. It's not so much the bridge itself. It's more the screws inside the saddles. Uh, a couple of them looks like they were picked from a parts drawer where some of them are, are taller than others. They still do the job 100%, but they're not all the same length. Uh, sometimes you have that when you have a really big radius on the fretboard, but that isn't really the case on this. That is really, you know, splitting hairs. The other issue that I had, the springs that hold the pickups in place, if you use a lot of compression, there's quite a lot of ring. I have to dampen them, go in there and change out the springs and use stiffer springs. The lazy way to do it, and to be honest, the way I always do it, is I'm just going to put some foam underneath the pickups, and then that'll stop that ring. Uh, it's, it's something that is only going to be an issue if you really have compression going and you do lots of stabs and stops, you know, gent, things like that. Since this is a five string bass, I suspect there's going to be a lot of that going on. So just watch out for those springs, uh, maybe even tightening them. I haven't even set it up properly yet. The only thing I've checked from a setup point of view is I've tested the neck to see if it bends the way I want it to when I test the relief on it, you know, the, the neck can bend when you change strings, when you do certain tunings. I check that first of all, because I need that to work, because I really like to dial in that neck. And this just was perfect. The neck just reacted to every wrench. The wrench comes with it. The wrench comes with the saddle height adjustments. It's got everything you need. It's got a really terrible cable. It's got a really terrible case. It's got a really terrible strap, but you need those things when you start off, you know, and it comes with it for free, so what else? comes with a pick. I'll actually like the pick that comes with it. It's like a nice, uh, it's actually a nice sounding pick. Not so much for bass, but for guitars in general. These are really little issues. I mean, spring ring, you know what I mean? It's, it, it can be literally fixed within seconds, probably. And also, uh, the, maybe the plastic nut is a little bit soft. No problems with the height of the nut is perfect. It sounds great. No buzz. There's buzz if you really dig in, but if you really dig in on any bass, the more you hit a string, the more it's going to travel around in a circle, basically, and it's going to hit something. Yeah, for relative lack of buzz is amazing. This, this guitar, it was practically, the fit and finish on it was amazing. 
I found one tiny scratch on it that I can buff out on the back. I've got a lot of glary basses now and guitars. By far, this was the best put together one that I have. I love the tuners on it. This is similar tuners that are on the other glary guitars that I have. Rock solid tuning, which is the most important thing. I tried bending the crap out of the strings, you know, after I've uh, let it, after I've tuned it and pull. I usually tune and pull, tune and pull. After I left it, I didn't tune it. It's it's awesome. I love it. I really love it. The, the, it's an amazing bass. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention uh, before I start going on about the, the good stuff. This happened to me on my Epiphone bass as well. The The top string and the bottom string, they're not quite as strong through the pickups as they are through the, the, the middle uh, three strings. So what I mean is that when you hit the lowest string, uh, the string next to it is going to be a bit louder. That has a lot to do with the string itself and also it has a lot to do with the frequency so the frequency drops out a bit so to combat that i did put some uh, compression on it so that brings all the levels up but that happens a lot when you have certain types of strings and but maybe the pickups maybe the pickups uh, could handle that a little bit better you know on the edges because uh you know if it did pick it up a little bit better that would be perfect but just giving you, you know, all the little things that I found with it. I did a test that I do. Listen to this. I, I do this test up on the 12th fret, and I kind of do a, uh, it's a test that I do that to test out the woodiness of the tone. When you go high up on these style basses, you get like a nice woody sound, and check out how woody this bottom fat ass string sounded when I started doing my test on it. those 12 strings just rang out perfectly and I'm so high up the neck I'm on massive thick strings you know a fifth string and it sounds amazing I love it it's got that vintage vibe to it despite being a, a five string so that was awesome I didn't set it up properly I, I really all I did was I made sure that none of the screws were rattling in the bridge you know where uh, the set screws so I, I got those all uh, aligned that's a very basic thing you can do in seconds and I didn't test the uh, intonation out the box you know when you set it up to standard uh, I didn't notice anything jump out at me of usually they are a bit out but there's lots of uh, leeway to go back and forth on the on the saddle so I'm not worried about that and if you're interested in the setup I used an edge cable and I used the Ziola cables went into the MXR I also used uh, you you guys might be a fan of his channel gear man dude and I've got one of the early versions of it it's called the gear man dude Luther drive and I put that, so a little tiny, it's more of like a volume boost with a little tiny bit of grit. And then here are the settings on the pedals. And that was into a Marshall uh, JCM 800 in the low input, full gain, which is not any gain at all. And uh, here are the settings for that. And the speakers, because uh, if you're interested, I just used a guitar setup on this for the bass. I always do this. I used a Vintage 30 on one side and a G12 T75 Celestian on the other side. Um, one had the SM57 on it, I believe the uh, Vintage 30 had the SM57, and the other speaker had a large condenser diaphragm, just a cheap sterling, you can pick them up for 70 bucks used uh, in Guitar Center. I think it's the ST59, uh, if you're interested in that. And I've done a video on cheap microphones if you want to check that out. I love this guitar, I don't know how they do it, 109.99 ship, really well packed, it was practically wrapped in foam. I love it. I love it. And you can get, if you want to pick one of these up, you can check the description in the top comment. There's a link and I get a little kickback. The tuning is amazing. I love these tuners, man. And it sounds great. I, I think you can tell by the video, it sounds great. If you are com a complete noob, I wouldn't worry that much about setups, to be honest. It played out of the box. When you're starting off, you don't hear subtle things like intonation and fret buzz and, you know, things like that. It's not that big a deal. As long as it holds its tune 
when you've tuned it, that's the main thing. And this thing does that. That's the most important thing. What I love about these Glary basses, with these Glary guitars now, I just put flat ones on the P style bass that I have. And I'm just gonna get another P style bass and put regular strings on it. How good is that for a, stu for a guy who tries to recreate tones where I don't have to change out strings? Because these basses are so cheap. I might even get one for free if uh, Glary are nice to me. But I'm gonna get a fretless bass. Fretless bass for next to nothing. How cool is that to have in your arsenal? Think about it. I can have a five string P style, a four string fretless. I can get a, uh, a jazz style guitar from them. I can get a different type of five string guitar from them. So I've got all these weapons that cost the same combined as a solid Korean bass guitar for the price of a solid Korean bass. You get, you, you can, pack your studio full of these things. I can't praise them enough. It's unbelievable. Honestly, take advantage of it while you can. I can't see it being... I said this last time though, but they're still going. <laughs> it's like, how can they make money? Uh, I, I, I did buy one initially, you know, to start off with, and they liked the video I did. So then, you know, I guess that's th that helps in my corner. But yeah, Fat Strings Friday, man. It's easier than ever to get one of these bitches and... Uh, fatstringsforever.com. Go and check out my other Fat Strings Friday video that I did today. And thanks to my patrons of Tone. You guys are awesome. You know who you are, Richard P and Co. And uh, if you want to help out the channel and so I can cut these damn strings, uh, I, I have to hit 100. It's been going on for over a year where I just made a joke that I won't cut my strings until I get 100 patrons. Just a dollar a month. I need 40 more people to sign up for a dollar. You can cancel straight afterwards. Just let me cut these goddamn strings, please. For the love of God. So share this on any uh, bass groups you're in, any bass forums, and anyone that likes the fat strings and they're on a budget, uh, or they ha they're a guitarist, a project guitarist that has aspirations of being a producer. You're going to have to know your way around these fat strings. Perfect. Perfect way to start off. Hey, it's a perfect way to finish. I'm not looking for anything. That, I think that speaks volumes. All right, chaps. Have a good one. Circle of tone.